Welcome. I'm Sebastian Mafud, and you're listening to WCAT Radio, the on-air wing of En Route Books and Media, bringing you the dulcet sounds of Catholic wisdom. Hello, my dear listeners. Welcome to the eighth episode of the radio program Discovery in Sacred Christian Art. Today, uh, here in Milan, is uh, the great fest of the patron, St. Ambrose, and uh, we celebrate him it's a great fest today because, uh, as you know, uh, St. Ambrose, even if uh, he was born in Germany, he lived here in Milan and uh, he died here. He had a great influence, as you know, on St. Augustine. I strongly hope that uh, you can visit Rome, of course, and uh, this uh, eighth episode he is uh, still dedicated to, to Rome, to the churches in Rome, but... I hope that uh, you will be able to visit also Milan with its with its uh, churches and uh, next episodes of this uh, radio program will be dedicated also to the sacred art and architecture in Milan that uh, here in Italy as you know is the second city after Rome. Let me point out just uh, only uh, an element uh, um, as you know uh, who belongs, uh, like me, to the Archdiocese of Milan, uh, lives in a particular way, uh, in a tradition, of course, because we are uh, Roman Catholics like everyone. Uh, we live uh, the Catholicism according to a special rite. This, um, a particular uh, rite is not the Roman rite, but the Ambrosian rite. It, it changed something uh, um, in the liturgical way to celebrate the Mass, uh, nothing else uh, for what concerns the festivities, only that uh, I need to point out uh, we have not four Sundays uh, for four weeks for the Advent time, but six. Anyway, in the little town where I live with my husband, and we are in the Archdiocese of Milan, historically, uh, here, um, the priests decided to not to follow the Ambrosian rite, but to be Ambrosian in, for what concerns the uh, diocese and our history, but to follow the classical Roman rite that you are following. So. I am Ambrosian, uh, liturgically and traditionally, and for what concerns my patron, that is today, St. Ambrose. But when here in our town we celebrate the Mass, we follow the normal rite. And also this particular aspect, I promise you, I will dedicate an episode in uh, next month. Well, uh, today the episode is dedicated to the churches in Rome, to the Baroque churches in Rome. So we spoke about uh, the churches in Rome, uh, the first uh, churches, uh, the St. Peter's Basilica, churches in late antiquity, churches uh, in the Renaissance, and today churches during the Baroque uh, period. Through the 17th century, you may know that the city of Rome uh, became the indisputed the protagonist of art and architecture of the Baroque. Baroque art and Baroque architecture are represented with the city of Rome. This style, which developed during the 17th century in Italy, is closely linked to the cultural climate of the Counter-Reformation and therefore to the work of the patron popes. The works realized in, the, in this historical moment uh, during the 17th century, the period of the Baroque, are characterized by a strong illusionistic nature. So try to, to remember, or if you are in front of your computer or in front of a tablet, try to digit Baroque style, Baroque art, just to have an idea of what I'm referring to. And aimed at arousing wonder and amazement of the observer. In the field of the religious architecture, of the sacred architecture, and its, the particularity of Rome, it must be emphasized that the church needs to, needed at that time to respond programmatically to the accusations of the Lutheran Reformation. 
So, as a result, the recovery of its role in the Western Christian world uses the language of art. During the Baroque period, the artist was called to express the message of the Church of Rome in an accurate but involving and persuasive manner. The result, I can say, that was obtained mainly through a strongly illusionistic painting, which uses expedients such as uh, the Trembleau and celebrates the life of main saints and protagonists of the main orders that gave impetus to the spread of the Christian message. This is the time in which in Rome, great churches of the Jesuits, for example, was born, was created. But I will tell you after. Uh, just one other um, puntualization in this short introduction. I can say that for all these reasons I listed, even the architectural structure of the churches responds to particular criteria. The nave, for example, is unique because the faithful must focus on the altar, and this is a great change, and on the communicative part of the liturgy, that is the altar. This need was expressed precisely by the dictates of the Council of Trent, as you may understand. Let's explore the churches presented in the pure and famous Baroque style. And uh, I can say that uh, the Baroque style during the 17th century is at the service of the sacred art because the Baroque style was the style of the 17th century. Remember that when I refer to the 17th century, I indicate the century that starts in 1601 and end in 700. Remember that each century starts with the number before. For example, if I say 18th century, it starts in 1701 and it ends in 1800. We have nine churches in Rome belonging to the Baroque style. The first and the most famous, the Church of the Gesù, the Church of the Jesus, please search on your computer or thanks to our Dr. Sebastian Mahfoud, we have the pictures, uh, I sent him uh, some pictures and uh, he uploaded uh, in the on the website of this episode number 8, Discovering Sacred Christian Art. But if you are uh, driving or on a bus, I hope not driving because uh, pay attention, or if you are on a train, you can search for Church of the Jesu, Church of the Jesus, the Mother Church of the Society of Jesus, Jesuits, located in the Piazza del Gesù, Jesus Square in Rome. The second is, uh, again, of the Jesuits, the search of St. Ignatius of Loyola at Campus Martius, also called in Italian, Chiesa di Sant'Ignazio di Loyola in Campo Marzio and in Latin Ecclesia Sant'Ignazio a Loyola in Campo Marzio. Number three, we have the new church, Nuova Chiesa, the new church also called St. Mary in Vallicella. Santa Maria in Vallicella with V A L L E C E L L A. Number four is Saint Agnes in Agone in Piazza Navona. Saint Agnes Sant'Agnese in Agone in Piazza Navona. Number five, we have San Carlo alle Quattro Fontane. Saint Charles at Four Fountains, also known as San Carlino. Number six, we have Saint Andrea at the Quirinale, Sant'Andrea at the Quirinale, with a Q. Number seven, we have St. Mary of the Victory, Santa Maria della Vittoria. Number eight, we have St. Andrew della Valle, Sant'Andrea della Valle. Number nine, we have the famous, and last, St. Eve at Sapienza, Santivo alla Sapienza. Sapienza is the name of the university in Rome, 
and this is the church by the famous architect of the Baroque style, Francesco Borromini. Let's start from the first. The Church of the Jesus, Chiesa del Gesù, is another church of the Society of Jesus, of the Society of Jesus all around the world, officially named Chiesa del Santissimo Nome di Gesù all'Argentina, Church of the Most Holy Name of Jesus at the Argentina. Argentina is not the country uh, in South America, but it's the place uh, in Rome. Its facade is the first truly Baroque facade we have uh, as a Baroque style in architecture, introducing the Baroque style into architecture. The church served as the model, fundamental model, for innumerable Jesuit churches all over the world. And uh, if a church is built by the Jesuits, the Jesuits need to refer to this church, Chiesa del Gesù, for the model, especially in Europe, in America, so starting from the church of St. Michael in Munich, that was built in the 16th century, the Corpus Christi Church in Niavis, that was built in the 16th century, the Cathedral of Cordoba in Argentina, that was built starting from the 16th century until the 18th century, as well as the Church of St. Ignatius of Loyola in Buenos Aires, that was built in the 18th century, the Church uh, of the Jesus in Philadelphia, and this church of the Jesus in Philadelphia was built in 19th century, starting from 1879 until 1888. Various parishes also share the name of the church of the Jesus in Rome all, over, all around the world. The paintings that we can see as we enter in the nave, in the crossing, and in the side chapels became models from Jesuit churches through Italy and Europe, as well as those of other orders. First conceived in 1551 by our very own St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, and active during the Protestant Reformation and the subsequent Catholic Counter-Reformation, the Church of Jesus, Chiesa del Gesù, was also the home of the Superior General of the Society of Jesus until the suppression of the order in 1773. The church, having been subsequently regained by the Jesuits, the adjacent Palazzo Palace is now a residence for Jesuit scholars from around the world studying at their university. And as you know, in Rome, their university, the University of the Jesuits, is the Pontifical Gregorian University in preparation for the ordination to the priesthood. The Jesus, Il Gesù, like we call the church, constitutes the prototype for, of the Baroque style church. It is located exactly where, five years later, uh, five years after its idea, the idea in 1556, the founder of the Jesuit Saint Ignatius of Loyola died. The Saint tomb is in the left transept. The decorations of gold, marble, and alabaster altar surround one of the largest known pieces of lapis lazuli, an earth globe held by an angel. The fresco in the ceiling, the great important fresco, one of the most important uh, presence and artwork in the history of art of the central navy shows in the perspective the glory of the name of Jesus. This is the name of the work. The name of Jesus. And this artwork, this fresco entitled The Name of Jesus, has influenced the style of the wall uh, frescoes in Europe. In the right to transept is the unified harm of St. Francis Xavier, one of the first members of the Jesuit order and the first missionary to reach, as you know, the Far East. Let's focus on the fresco entitled The Name of Jesus. I sent to our Dr. Sebastian Mahfoud the link so you can follow me through the images and he uploaded on our page, let me repeat, 
www.italianways.com slash LA volta della chiesa del Gesù a Roma. The central vault, as you can see from this website, there are great images. Now let me explain you. Great images and focus on just one this fresco. The fresco by the painter Baciccio, Giovanni Battista Gaulli called Baciccio, entitled The Name of Jesus, a great artwork. The central vault of the name of the church of the most holy name of Jesus houses this pictorial masterpiece by Giovanni Battista Gaulli called Baciccio. He was born in 1639 and died in 1709. This fresco is also entitled sometimes the triumph of the name of Jesus, dedicated to the consecration of the church. These artists from Genoa between uh, 1674 and 1679 was introduced to work in the Mother Church of the Society of Jesus thanks to the good offices of Bernini. The ceiling opens in front of the spectator's amazement, the images invested by the ray of light that starts from the center monogram of Christ, exploding interacting, thanks also to the skillful shading made on the lower edge of the frame with a wooden figurative apparatus and stucco realized on a design by him, Giovanni Battista Gaulli, and also by other artists. This is an illusionistic baroque marvel, and I hope you, my dear students and listeners, can visit it in Rome. I suggest you to visit it. I strongly suggest. The second, the Church of St. Ignatius of Loyola at Campus Martius, is a Roman Catholic titular church dedicated to St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Society of Jesus, and this church is built in Baroque style after the first church, between the 1626 and the 1650. Pay attention. This church is the second church of the history of the Jesuits, after the Chiesa del Gesù, and functioned originally as the chapel of the adjacent Roman College, Collegio Romano, that moved in uh, 1584 to a new larger building that was renamed the Pontifical Gregorian University. The Collegio Romano was a school established by St. Ignatius Loyola in 1551, just 17 years after he founded the Society of Jesus, and he founded the Society of Jesus in 15. 34. The Church of St. Ignatius, Ignatius was begun in 1627 and completed in 1685 as the second Jesuit church in Rome. Surprising are the perspectives of the frescoes by the Jesuit artist Andrea Pozzo. He was a Jesuit, a lay Jesuit. And these frescoes, in particular one, the most important, must be observed from the point marked on the ground, from every other point the perspective, in fact, are distorted. I can uh, testify because I was there sometimes, many times. And you may know that the optical perception of the painted spherical dome, but actually completed, completely flat because it's just an illusion, still amazes the visitor today. The square, Piazza Sant'Ignazio, in front of the church, is a gem, a delicious gem, marvelous work of art, of architecture, sorry, from the 18th century Rococo style, that is like the Baroque style, of the architect Filippo Ragozzini. The church of St. Ignatius as a Latin cross plane with numerous side chapels. The building was inspired by the Jesuit Mother Church, that is, the Church of the Jesus in Rome, La Chiesa del Gesù. We can say that uh, for what concerns the famous fresco of Andrea Pozzo, was, uh, that was made on the model 
of the fresco of Giovanni Battista Gaulli called the Bacicchio for the previous church. Andrea Pozzo was, as I told you, a Jesuit lay brother, and he painted a great fresco that stretched across the nave ceiling. He made it after 1685. And this fresco celebrates the work of St. Ignatius and the Society of Jesus in the world presenting the saint welcomed into the paradise by Christ and by the Virgin Mary and surrounded by all the allegorical sorry, representations of all four continents to indicate the, 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 travel, the traveling of St. Ignatius. Andrea Pozzo worked to open up, even dissolve the actual surface of the nave's barrel, worked illusionistically, arranging a perspective of projection, projection so sorry, to make an observer see a huge and lofty a dome, a sort of dome, uh, open to the sky, we can say, in this case, a bright sky, and filled with upward floating figures, a marble disc set into the middle of the naval floor marks the ideal spot from which observers might fully experience the illusion. A second marker in the naval floor further uh, his provide the ideal vantage point for the Trump Leu painting on canvas that cover the crossing and depicts a tall ribbon covered dome. This dome, uh, one expects to see here uh, thanks to the illusion and thanks to the previous project, was never built and its place in 1685, Andrea Pozzo supplied a painting on canvas with a perspectival projection of a cupola. Destroyed then in 1891, the painting was subsequently replaced. Now, after these two marvelous, chur marvelous churches by the Jesuits, Let's go to number three, the new church, Santa Maria in Valicella. Let me spend just a few words. It was built in the 16th century. It is the place of the last rest of San Philip Neri. It is flanked by the Oratorio of the Philippines, one of the most interesting works by Francesco Borromini, Filippini for San Philip Neri. Number four, the church number four is a St. Agnes in Agone, in Piazza Navona. was begun in uh, the middle of the 17th century and completed by the famous architect of the Baroque style, Francesco Borromini. Number five, again built by Francesco Borromini, the number five is, is the famous St. Charles at the Four Fountains, San Carlo alle Quattro Fontane also known as San Carlino, a marvelous jewel of the Baroque style. It was projected and built by Borromini between 1638 and 1663, so in the middle of the uh, 17th century. The church is near to the intersection of the uh, street of the Quattro Fontane, four fountains, with a street that brings to the Quirinale and uh, 20 September way. From this intersection, you can see three of the many obelisks of Rome. The first, the obelisk of the Quirinal, the second, the obelisk in front of Trinità dei Monti, and the third, the one in front of Santa Maria Maggiore. Also at the four corners of the intersection are the four fountains that give to the street its name, and from the street, the name is given to the church. The number six is St. Andrew at the Quirinale, only a few meters away. Is this other jewel of Bernini that was uh, projected and created in the years between 1658 and 1671. The small church is a Baroque jewel. Then, number seven, we have St. Mary of the Victory, Santa Maria della Vittoria that was built between 1605 and 1625. In the Sumptuous Baroque Church, it is the ecstasy of St. Teresa, the great work by the sculptor Jean-Laurent Bernini. And eight, 
St. Andrea della Valle, along the street to go to the Vatican, designed and built by Pierpaolo Olivieri, by Carlo Maderno, Francesco Grimaldi, and you may know that Carlo Maderno is the other famous architect. And this church was built in the core of the 17th century. The nearby Valle Palace gave the church its name because of the family Valle. The Baroque facade was added between 1655 and 1663 at the expenses of the Cardinal Francis Peretti of Montalto. And now, here we are in the church number nine of the Baroque history of sacred art and architecture in Rome, Sentivo alla Sapienza. Please, church for this uh, for some images of this church. Search for Sentivo alla Sapienza. Sentivs at the Sapienza. This church, Sentivo at the Sapienza, is a church in Rome dedicated to Sentivo Helor, located in the San Giustecchio district, built in the second half of the 17th century between 1642 and 1660 by the Switzerland Italian architect Francesco Borromini, the great artist of the Baroque style. For its artistic, technical, and symbolic values, the building is considered as one of the masterpieces of the architect, the Baroque, and the history of architecture in general. St. Eves at the Sapienza, this church, was a very difficult subject for the architect Borromini, conditioned by the pre-existence of the building and the courtyard already built, which left a very limited quadrangular space to build the church. But if you see it, it's a marvelous artwork. From these bonds, Francesco Borromini, the architect, will obtain an opportunity of great freedom. He chooses a triangular plan that allows him to create a body organized on the lines, double the triangle to create a six-pointed star that occupies the entire available surface. And to this form, it subtracts and adds circular spaces according to a strict logical scheme. The need to exploit as much as possible a square lot the interest in a mixed shell which would allow him to continue in the experience of the San Carlino at the Quattro Fontane, and the idea of drawing inspiration from symbolic forms capable, of course, of linking the origin and the scheme to primary meanings, will be the inspiring motive of the project. Boromini's project was very different from today's creation. In fact, it began to complicate it. It was replaced over the years. The result is obtained with extreme purity and apparent simplicity. The centralized plan mingled, draws a sort of six-pointed star, and the walls trace the perimeter. We can say that uh, uh, inside, it is worth mentioning the altarpiece with St. Ivo Helleroy, who is the patron of the lawyers of uh, Pietro da Cortona. This painting, is, uh, this altarpiece is by Pietro da Cortona, unfinished for the death of the master in 1665, and finished by his students. We can say that Francesco Borromini worked with a lot of symbolism. For example, and then I will close, but just let me tell this element the Trinity, symbolized by the triangle, is the starting figure which, combined with another inverted triangle and with the concave and convex parts of the circle, will form the stylized figure of the three beers, a symbol of charity, a symbol of prudence, and a symbol of art work, as well as the same time heraldic element in the coat of arms of the Barberini family whose exponent, Pope Urban VIII, commissioned the church. Well, my dear listeners, I strongly hope that you will be able to visit Rome and to visit these marvelous churches. 
I know that now it may appear difficult to follow me, but when you will be in Rome, it will be easier to remember all my words. In the ninth episode, I will uh, keep it uh, on Thursday, December the 20th. I will talk about the other two papal basilicas, not in Rome, but as I told you, in Assisi and in Assisi, St. Mary of the Angels. Bye-bye and may God bless you tomorrow for the test of the Immaculate Conception and uh, today and it's uh, going on in this Advent time. We hope you enjoyed the program and will join us back for another show on WCAT Radio. This is Sebastian Mafud. Good day.